Welcome to the worship of First Baptist Church of Los Angeles. Today is August the 2nd, 2020. May God bless us as we come to worship in spirit and in truth. In my heart, I need you. Thank you. 
to Jesus Hold on Hold on Hold on to Jesus When you're tired and discouraged And you need a helping hand of trials and troubles There's a friend that you can trust When you're lonely and disheartened Feeling pain within your soul There's a Savior who can understand His strong Love will see you through. Hold on, hold on, hold on to Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on to Jesus. He is the of the world He is the bread of life He is the living water He is the bright morning star He is the prince of peace He is the gate to Hold on, hold on, hold on to Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on to Jesus. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we come with thankful hearts. We come with repentant spirits. We trust that you are not only forgiving, but you are gracious to us. You help us through in life. You attend us, you protect us, you lead us. Oh, gracious God, ultimately, you are working out your plan of salvation and redemption. We trust that you are working things out in our days, in our time in this life, but also in the fullness of history. O oh, gracious God, may we have faith. Encourage us to deepen our faith. O oh, gracious God, may we develop a faith that others look at and say, wow, where does that come from? And we know it only comes by the work of your Holy Spirit to refine us, developing us, working in us so that we may grow together as your people. O oh, gracious God, we bring our heart of concern to you today. We pray for loved ones in this nation, this world, this city that we're in, the places that we reside in, our neighbors, our friends and family. We pray for those who need healing touch, those who are going through surgeries, those who are going through difficulties with unemployment and depression and loneliness. We pray in the midst of this COVID pandemic that you'd help us have endurance. Oh, gracious God, we pray for your work in these days and that together we would seek you and grow in our faith and overcome doubt and fear. We pray all this gracious God in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen i thank you jesus for this day your gentle strong hand leads the way
praise you, Jesus, for this day. Your gentle, strong hand guides our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. Your gift of grace is our peace. For we shall come to the waters to cleanse our souls, and we shall come Scripture reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 11. We're starting a new series. Uh, it's called Extreme Faith, and do we ever need more faith in these days? Well, we always have needed faith, but we need to increase our faith. This life we live many times can be compared to being like a marathon. When we lived in Boston, we saw at the Boston Marathon people running the 26 miles up and down the hills, and, but running not solo, but running with others. We're not alone. Realize that others are around you. And we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Here in Hebrews 11 and 12, we'll hear about those in the hall of faith, those who ran the race before us and who are cheering us on. We'll learn you know, about some of the great Old Testament people of faith. But we'll be encouraged that we are called to trust in Jesus Christ and trust God, our Heavenly Father, in our own marathon of faith, in our own daily walk and run. So let's have faith. Let's listen to Hebrews chapter 11. We'll look at verses 1 to 6 today. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man, when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, he still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. May God add his blessing to this word and help us in understanding its application to our daily lives. Amen. So what is extreme faith? Well, we've already heard a few examples from Hebrews 11 of several different people of faith, even going way back to the beginning. Abel had faith. He gave the very best he could to God. Enoch pleased God, and he was brought up to God before he physically died. <laughs> what a nice way to go. Extreme faith many times involves being stretched, being strong, and trusting in God through the struggle. And we will go through struggles in life. 
None of us have a perfect faith, but we can all say that if we're seeking God, we can grow in faith, and that is the key. Are we seeking God? All of us will wrestle with doubt, fear, anxiety, questions. Sometimes we let our imagination go too far. Yes, all of us in our humanity have limitations when it comes to faith, but that doesn't mean that God's Spirit can't work in our life to help us grow in faith. As a matter of fact, that's how we develop a strong faith. It's through those trials that we learn to trust God even more. That we actually can develop a faith that overcomes, a faith like a mustard seed that can say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, like Jesus said. Well, the key is we will face mountains and obstacles in our journey, and the question is, will we have just that bit of faith to help us overcome? And even when we have failed or fallen, will we get back up again and say, God, I believe. Help me overcome my disbelief. So extreme faith, you could say, is the X factor in order to know God and his presence. When you have faith, you say, not my will, but thy will be done. When you have faith, you're able to look beyond the situation to trust that God will help you. When you have faith, you trust that God is at work. He is the one. Or Jesus, likewise, is the one. The Holy Spirit, likewise, is the one who will help you in your time, either to counsel, lead, encourage, protect, help you grow, help you see things more clearly, have discernment, all those things. And in the awareness of God's presence, in understanding that our faith leads to an awareness of the working of God and his power, we discover that God's love is more powerful than we give credit for. We experience God's powerful love at work, even in the most difficult of situations, even to overcome through faith, extreme faith. Now we have a definition here about what faith is. We believe that the Apostle Paul wrote Hebrews. He may have done it in coordination with another author, but we're not sure. But nonetheless, here in Hebrews 11.1, 1, we have a definition of faith. Faith is being sure, or another translation says, faith is the substance of things unseen, the substance of things hoped for. Well, here we have now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, one thing I have noted uh, as I've tried and I've enjoyed sailing is you have to trust in the wind. Now, there's ice sailing. I've never tried that. And not only do you have to trust in the wind, you have to trust in the ice. Make sure that that ice is good and strong, but at a certain point you go upon that surface. And there's something wonderful about the journey of faith. You have to trust in the wind of the Spirit and also discern the wind of the Spirit and where it's blowing in order to orient your ship. So this matter of faith means that there needs to be some understanding too that develops. So we adjust to the leading of the Spirit. Our faith is not only in the power of God, but it's responsive to the leading of God and the work of God's Spirit so that we can adjust ourselves and the journey and the sail and the mast and the tension and everything so that we can journey forward and direct with the leading of the Spirit to journey, to serve, to care, and to make a difference. So extreme faith involves a journey. Now we look way back in ancient times, we realize that faith is something that can be encouraged as we look at the scriptures, at the examples of biblical history, but not only that, throughout human history and in our present time. 
Here's what Paul says in Hebrews 11.2. This is what the ancients were commended for. The ancients, can you imagine some of the things that they went through? You know, we rely upon technology and our science. Back then they had to be ingenious. They had to develop new solutions. They had to figure out how to build without some of the powerful tools we have, but they used their brains. They used their ingenuity and creativity. But they did so believing that they could do these things, that they could get through, they could work together. The ancients were commended for their faith. And faith meaning that they didn't just look at life as being something for them to control and manipulate, they relied upon God. We need to rely upon God and what he provides and what he inspires us to do, and what ideas God's spirit can lead us toward if we are open and if we also work together. So the ancients were commended for their faith. Will we be commended for our faith? We will be challenged, yes, but will we be commended for our faith? Now faith will lead to understanding. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. God's creation was spoken into being by his command. As you look at the creation narrative in Genesis 1 and then 2, you see God created through his word and his command. God created through his Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God was upon the face of the deep as God spoke creation into being. The word for creating in the Greek here is ex nihilo, out of nothing. God's able to create from concept from thought, from idea, and then created into being, because God is God. So God create, created what is seen out of what was unseen. Indeed, faith, right from the beginning, began with God. God commanded, and it was so. Now let's see two examples of extreme faith. The first example we're given is Abel. And he brings a commendable offering to God. Let's read this. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. Now, what was different about Abel's offering than Cain's? If we go back there to Genesis we'll, see, Genesis, we'll see that Abel gave the very best of the lamb, lambs that he had. He gave his very best. It was like something from the heart. He loved that lamb. And so this was a very difficult and yet very meaningful and personal offering, the very best that Abel could give. What did Cain give? Well, he was growing produce and so forth. He didn't bring his very best. Well, let's see, uh, yeah, this one will do. Yeah, let's, let's, I'll, save the, I'll save the best for myself. God has enough. No, that's not really the way it works. The question was a, a matter of heart and priority and trust and faith. Abel had faith and trust in God, that God would continue to help him, but he was also grateful. And so he gave out of a grateful heart and a heart with faith and trust that God would understand that he was giving his best. And that mattered to him. It mattered to Abel that he gave out of the abundance of faith. Now Cain, Cain gave out of a 
lack of faith. He didn't really trust in God's full provision and he figured he better hold on to some for himself. Instead of giving his first fruit, giving his very best, he gave God the leftovers. He didn't really trust in God. He lacked the kind of faith that would lead him toward better, betterment and fruitfulness. So Cain, as we know the story goes on, Cain's offering was not received with favor where Abel's was, and Cain became angry and jealous. And his true heart was revealed in his hatred toward his brother, and that his brother had put him to shame. Abel wasn't trying to do that. He was just giving his best to God. We see this played out at many times in our life today. People who become jealous and resentful. Indeed, what God calls us to is a heart of sacrifice and love, and that takes faith. Well, Paul said this, By faith he was commended, Abel, as a righteous man, when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. How could he still speak even though he's dead? Is it his example that speaks? Is it his character, his, ex his offering itself? I believe that Abel, because he was righteous through faith, is received unto the kingdom of heaven. When his body was killed, and the blood cried out from the earth to God, God received his spirit. God heard the soul cry and received his beloved Abel into his care in heaven. And that's why his faith remains an, not only an example, but the very life of Abel giving his best to God by faith, still speaks to us today, and he is with God in heaven. You could say he was the first martyr. Here's another example. The example of Enoch. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. It's said about Enoch that he walked with the Lord, that he enjoyed the presence of the Lord, that he daily made time to converse and talk with God. And because of that, he had wisdom. Because of that, he overcame trials and troubles. Enoch was an example of one who was given wisdom because he walked daily with God to listen and to learn. So faith is something that will help us grow in our understanding of God, in our wisdom for life. Now, faith many times is developed through trial and error. <laughs> Sometimes when we've had doubts, when we've had to overcome fears and anxiety, the result, with God's help, is that we can grow in faith and understanding and wisdom. There's a very practical element to having faith. It will help you develop your character as a person made in the image of God and whose God's Spirit can work within you to bring transformation, newness of life, and continued development as a human being, as a child of God. Indeed, this example of Enoch is such that we see that we please God most by trusting in his presence and seeking him daily, having those times daily when we seek God. And if we've made mistakes or we find we're struggling, all the more reason to go to God to learn. Extreme faith means that we come to God. 
Now, there are four things here we find in verse 6 about extreme faith involves coming to God. Well, first of all, faith pleases God. And there's faith in God's presence, faith in God's fairness, and faith in God's hospitality. Well, let's hear this. Verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we have faith, it will please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. So we are to believe. How can you help but believe if you see all the evidence? Well, there are things people will say, well, how about this and how about that? Why this? Why that? To try to dismiss the existence of God. But you know, God doesn't question our existence. Why do we question God's existence? How could life begin without a beginning? How could there be life without an origin? Where does it all begin from? It begins from God, the Creator, who is also the Redeemer. And we read this then. And then he rewards those who earnestly seek him. There's two things we find. He rewards people. God is fair. He is just. He will reward. He will encourage. He will prune. He will help grow. And he will give a reward to those who serve him, who are part of the work of his kingdom. But he will also hold into account every human being. And it says that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God is one who has great hospitality. And God wants to welcome us into his kingdom. Not only does he want to give a reward and his grace and his goodness to us, but he earnestly seeks that time when we will come into his presence and he can give the complete hospitality that he has prepared for us in the kingdom of heaven. But we do experience the hospitality of God even now in the temporal rewards and even those spiritual rewards that we experience from day to day. The presence of his Holy Spirit, the encouragement and comfort of his care and love, the peace that he gives, the understanding that he gives. Indeed, these are things that God earnestly seeks to give us if we earnestly seek him. The key is honesty and earnesty. I'm not sure earnesty is a word, but let's just say we need to earnestly come before him as he desires to bless us. Why do we need extreme faith? Three things. Extreme faith is a matter of earnest and open seeking. In this journey of life, in this voyage. And the second is we discover God's presence and power by faith. And the third thing is by faith we discover a relationship, a covenant of grace and truthfulness. Faith, as it grows, will help us become the people of God we're meant to be. Now, all of us will have moments in life where our faith is either tested or is found insufficient. And in those times, we need to seek the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray, but we also need to trust in God even when we don't yet know the answer or must live with some level of uncomfortability, inconvenience, when we have to wait upon God for an answer. I'm sure there's a parent or two or who, who've had to wait to find out how their children were doing, whether they be young,
teenagers or adults, and all you can do is really pray. There are times that we have to indeed trust God. There are times that we wait upon an answer to a medical test or for treatment to see if it'll work or for a vaccine for a virus in a pandemic. Faith is essential. It involves a marathon, it involves a journey, it involves trusting in God, and God is with us in the journey to help us grow so that our faith will increase and our relationship can be strengthened with Him and His Holy Spirit can work in us to refine us we have to trust in his redeeming love. And outside of that, where do we go? We can become distant. We can become depressed. We can become disturbed and distraught. Oh yes, even people of faith have had those moments. Even John in prison wondered one time in the midst of the prison, is Jesus really the Son of God, is he really the Messiah? And he had to send someone just to make sure, to ask Jesus. And Jesus said, you know, the lame can walk, the blind can see. Go tell John these things, that I am the Messiah. Well, we will have our moments. But God is gracious. Let us seek him. For faith is the key to a relationship with the living God. Let us trust his presence always. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your love, for your presence in our lives. May we open our hearts to you as you welcome us, as you are with us in this journey. Help us to be patient and perseverant in the marathon of this journey of life. May our faith increase in these days. May we share our faith. May we learn from one another. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Out on the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sorrow we glad. Blessing, make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine, make me a blessing. Oh, Savior, I pray, make me a blessing to someone today. the sweet story of Christ and his love. Tell of his power to forgive. Others will trust him if only you prove true to the moment you live. Make me a blessing, make me a blessing. Savior, I pray, make me a blessing to someone today. Give us what's given to you in your need. Love us, the Master, love you. Be to the helpless a friend of
Welcome to the Lord's table. Jesus lifted up the cup, the bread, and he invited us, as he invited his disciples long ago, to the table of the Passover. Jesus would give his life as the Passover lamb, the one who came to take away the sins of the world. And as we believe in him, and as we, in our hearts, let his blood be put around the doorpost of our heart and life, we discover the grace of God covers us. Of course, this symbolizes the very life and sacrifice of Jesus for us. Indeed, we recognize as he lifted up the cup that he spoke about what he would give to them and what he gives to all who believe, and that is the grace of God, the forgiving, redeeming, reconciling grace of God. It is a gift of God. Let us hear this word from Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the blessing of your redeeming grace, of your Son, Jesus, of your Holy Spirit, of the gift of communion and fellowship, the gift of salvation. Amen. Jesus lifted up the bread after he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. Let us take and eat together as members of the body of Christ in remembrance of Jesus, believing in him and our gracious Heavenly Father. In lifting up the cup, Jesus said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Let us receive this cup. Let us drink together of this cup as we trust in the fullness of God's mercy, in the fullness of God's forgiveness, that our sins, though they be like scarlet, can be washed white like snow, and that we are partakers not only of life, that God gives, but grace that God gives, redeeming love, whereby we are cleansed within. Let us drink together in remembrance of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the blessing of your love. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts and minds. And gracious God, thank you that in all this you give your Holy Spirit for grace deposited, forgiveness through your Son Jesus, and also, gracious God, that you unite us through your Holy Spirit. Thank you. May your people Join in the heart and song of your spirit. All this gracious God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.